So, we recently had an expansion announcement, End of Dragons, and it could be a really big one for the Guild Wars story. In fact, all the expansions and stuff with the game at the moment really revolves a lot around the story, but I've been thinking there's probably a lot of people who are totally out of touch on what exactly is going on. Maybe there's a bunch of new players entirely that will be coming in and this will be their first expansion, and they're not going to know what the hell is happening. In this mini-series, I'll be showing you everything there is to know and teaching you about the story, the current state of Tyria, so that you understand what's going on and hopefully are invested in the expansion. You'll be seeing all the major story beats from the recent patches, the big conversations and cutscenes, as well as a catch up from the earlier stuff. I'm really thinking about those new players, or people that maybe really like the plot, but just haven't been thinking about it very much in recent years and kind of want something to get re-enthused. There's obviously 10 years of subject material to get through here, so I'm going to open us up with a montage that I've cut together that's going to show you all the base story and the original expansions and their living world seasons until nowadays. And then we're going to do an, an expanded playthrough of some of the most recent stuff and hopefully in a pretty concise way. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Please don't be scared to link this to any new players you want to be interested in the world. Hopefully they know the main idea. This is Tyria, a world ravaged and threatened by the Elder Dragons, who we, the main character, are trying to defeat. So let's jump in with all the major earlier story points at the start of part one here. Enjoy! For the Queen. For Kryta! Tyria. The dragons have always been here. Sleeping deep beneath the earth. Beneath the sea. Waiting for the time to rise. One hundred years ago, the drowned empire of Bor rose from the sea at a dragon's command. A dragon whose name is written in the legends of the dwarves. A dragon known as Zaitan. His soulless army surged from the waters, hungry for destruction. Our ancestors fought against the tide. But Zaitan's power was too great. We have learned from those defeats. We learned that no single nation can fight alone and succeed. The five races must stand together against their enemies and refuse to surrender. Heroes come together in glory, discovering new magic, new technology that will save our world. You are nothing before Zaitan's might. Stagger before the power of the dragon. Insects, you've chosen a terrible time to be heroes.
one, you go up against Zaitan alone? I got out by the skin of my teeth and hopped a lift with this ship. It's a new design. Impressive. I think this is just what we need to take down a dragon. Everyone to your battle stations. We're going in. In the far Shiver Peaks, an unlikely partnership was forged between Dredge and Flame Legion. This molten alliance enslaved the Norn and Char, testing their cruel weaponry on anyone in their way. To the west, Aetherblade Sky Pirates staged a cunning political assassination in Lion's Arch, leaving ruin and death in their wake. It seemed the two were unrelated, but we were wrong. In the middle of Queen Jenna's Jubilee, her own Watch Knights transformed into clockwork horrors and attacked, joined by the Molten Alliance and Aetherblade Pirates. It was then that we saw the face of our true enemy for the first time, Scarlet Briar. Scarlet's dark seed took root in Twilight Arc, where she stockpiled weapons and trained her army in secret. She seduced the Nightmare Court and deceived the crate into an uneasy alliance to grow a tower with deadly magic. Her poison spread, plaguing the land with noxious fumes and agonizing hallucinations. We had no idea that the worst was yet to come. Lion's Arch burned. Scarlet's journey was nearly complete. She planted the seeds long ago, and as her evil took root, it grew into something horrifying. The heroes of Tyria fought back. But our darkest hour was yet to come. Scarlet's armies attacked Lion's Arch without warning or mercy. Her victory seemed assured. As Tyria's last hope, he rallied and put an end to Scarlet's onslaught of terror.
The dragon is rising. And no one in Tyria is safe from its deadly reach. But we can break free from destiny. It will require strength, strategy, and insight. Trust Silvari. They belong to the dragon now. Stop treating us like monsters! We are not the enemy! Take the fight to Mortremoth!
he absorbed the Bloodstone's power. After the coming battle, I hope any of us are still breathing. What's happening to the island? The swell of magic will cause a cataclysmic eruption. I didn't think we'd be dealing with another dragon so soon. Lazarus's aspects. Without it, they could have never resurrected Lazarus. The real Lazarus. Mortal danger. A Mursat slash not a Mursat on the way. He's on the way? What should we do? <laughs> He's trapped us here. Willingness to kill to get what he wants. No, it can't be. The charade ends here. And it fades into nothingness. The last gasp of a murderous race. Praise the six. Commander, there's something I have to tell you. I went into the mists after my sword, but I found something else. Refugees are pouring in from Alona. If he kills an Elder Dragon, Tyria will never recover. stand in the glory of Balthazar's light. Dragons. If you won't join the fight against the dragons, I'll see you all burn with them. That conflict could only end in two ways. The ruin of the Six, or the utter destruction of Tyria's magical balance. So, the commander of the Dragon's Watch Guild now stands alone against the God of War. Armed with nothing but a soul. And the foolish belief that you just accomplished something. I've stopped you from destroying Tyria. That's something. You've stopped nothing. My war beast has weakened Kravitar. You, the Dragon Slayer, now claim to be the champion! I can fix what I've done, but only if Krakatoa lives. No, but you stole me. I will finish! I will for you! Still standing. No! Curse you, Dwayna! Melandru! Betraying one of your own! Grunt! Gormir! May the forest!
dragon the energy of a god. What could go wrong? Caging anyone who resists. I don't know how much longer we can survive. Orin? Hope she still remembers who her friends are. <laughs> to curtain. Places for act one, please. Places for act one. Break a leg, people. It's showtime. Joku's bored. Let's pick up the pace. <sighs> the rules of my immortality are drastically understated. Fear not. The world will not forget you. The scars you've gouged into it spell out your name for all to see. They call me a monster, and you a hero. The world expects Palawa Joko to dare to throw reality into chaos. But surely, no Mortal would be so monumentally stupid as to destroy a dragon. The life force of this world. Let alone two. And a god to boot. Perhaps they will finally thank me for luring you to me. So that I may save the world from you. And once you're gone, everyone will flock to my embrace. They will all love me, Palawa Ignatius. <laughs> to not only destroy Kral Katorik, but also replace it. I hope you fare better, my sister. I hope you feel full of purpose. Maureen has had a premonition, a vision of the future, of multiple futures. Do not let them, or yourself, forget what you are. Glint believed in us. I believe in you. Together, we're going to save the world and kill the Crystal Dragon. Well, so there you have it, the complete story up until right towards the end of Living World Season 4. A season revolving around the battle with the Elder Dragon, Krau uh, And I'm going to be cutting in with the gameplay now. We will actively play everything that's come out in recent years. So we're going to conclude Season 4 here, and then we'll be moving on into the Icebrood Saga, which for basically the past two years or so, right up until End of Dragons comes out, is the main story that ArenaNet will have been going with. So this is the very end of the patch, All or Nothing, at a point where we have a real plan to fight the dragon, a ton of allies, and a ton of technology. Kanak, your team have those explosives set and ready to go? Just the finishing touches now. Love the positivity, but wrap it up, please. 
At this moment in the story, reality is kind of completely disintegrating because of all the chaotic magics and energies that we've caused displacing these massive creatures. But our plan is to defeat Krakatoric and actually have Aureen ascend to become an Elder Dragon herself, something explained in Glint's legacy throughout the story of the recent expansions. Ah, Commander, welcome. Captain Thackeray and the others are waiting for you just beyond the mess hall. There are a billion allies at our side here. Uh, we've got Awakened and Omicron, all kinds that you'll see me interacting with. In fact, some of these Awakened Silvari over here are still really interesting to me. I don't think we find many more after this patch. Hear me, Premier. I call upon you with sincere heart and clear intention. Guide my aim to strike deep and true. Guide my shield to protect every ally at my side. Oh, Cormier, fortify my spirit. Let me meet my end, shining with your glorious light. I whipped up something special to feed the troops. Want a taste? This was a fun mechanic for the preparation of the dragon. You can opt into getting these combat buffs that lock you out of achievements, but nonetheless are pretty fun to play with. Here we get some more of the Awakened, uh, who obviously are the sentient, their own, cre their own characters with their own ambitions and ideas, many of them joining our cause after the defeat of Palawa Joko. Let's hope not. Okay. Between the fleet's cannons and Kanak dropping a mountain on him, Krelk should already be hurting when he shows. Aurene will keep him busy while I trigger the resonance crystals, starting here. That should stun him and buy me time to get to the second crystal, where we hit him again. Bram's team holds the third until I can get there, and we trigger the final blast. Okay, I think we're actually ready. Everyone, listen up. We'd all love to have more time to prepare for this. We don't have that luxury. But the truth is, we don't need it. Kralkatorik seems invincible, but he himself had a vision, a prophecy of a world without him. We have everything we need. He's hurting, half out of his mind. We're going to lure him right where we want him, and then we're going to make his vision a reality. Glint believed in us. I believe in you. Together, we're going to save the world and kill the Crystal Dragon. To your posts! Woo! <laughs> Commander, I have modified the Resonance Crystals with the Dredge technology. They are ready. None of this would be possible without your work. We won't forget it. It has been my honor. Kaith and Aureen await you in the auditorium. All I can think about is dying before dawn. I can't do this. Dolia could follow you tomorrow, but that wouldn't help your family. Dying in battle might. You can live to be an old man, but if the cause was your little sister's lives, would you pay it? No. You're right. I can do this. So this is the auditorium we're entering now. The scene of the battle with Kraukatorik. A sufficiently sized room. Of course, you'll see we have all these dragon's blood spears around. A lot of stories involved getting access to these and forging them based on the spear from the novel. How's she doing? She's afraid, but she's ready to enter the mists and draw Kraukatorik here. <laughs> I know, but you trust us, don't you? A lot's hanging on this. It's a heavy weight to carry. But you and I are carrying it together. Scion and champion, right? Okay, Aureen. It's time. Shoot! Enough! 
Blow the charges, now! With pleasure! Okay, just like before. He's focused on our ring, Commander. Time for you to do your thing! So the story of the battle with Kralkatorik went something like this, using the resonating crystals and the dragon's blood spears to open up these weak points and actually try to damage him, which Aurene confirms genuinely is injuring the Elder Dragon. We're breaking him. She says hit him again, harder. Okay, I'm heading for the second crystal. Commander, come here. Aurene says she can use the lay knife to break the scrolls. The battle has a variety of these running sequences where you're meant to mount up and get moving uh, and Krakatoric is summoning these crystals to get in our way. I love this moment here with even a Janundu worm like allied and helping us out, along with the Awakened of course. If you watch closely there, you will have seen, and there's a little bit of dialogue I cut out here as well. Uh, you can see Zaitan's energies were being utilized there, Balthazar's and Morgamoth's. Kraukatorik's mad at this point in this story because he just has so many different forms of magic within him. And Aurene just ate a full blast of all of it to defend us.
A promise that we'd win. Commander. Oh, spirits. We thought... Where? Is she? So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed the start of the recap, I'll see you on the next part for the conclusion of Living World Season 4 and the move into the Icebrood Saga. Plenty more recap to come, I'll see you there.